Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar, run for the latest UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we head towards the end of March and start of April it is looking fairly stunning indeed, really quite beautiful spring like weather, lots of sunshine, lots of blue skies and of course we are seeing pleasant temperatures as well. Nothing too insane on the temperature front because we still have this easterly flow which is bringing in some slightly cooler air off the North Sea. So the actual surface temperatures aren't going to be too much above average, a few degrees above average. Nothing too insane though yet. As we progress into the longer range, this high pressure system looks like it's going to hang around. But we do have some quite considerable disagreement between the longer range charts, exactly what air mass we will see. And it all is dependent on the orientation and exact positioning of this high pressure. So there is complete confidence into the probably the first 10 days of April of seeing very little in the way of precipitation, very dry conditions, but the temperatures could go one of two ways. We've got runs like the GEM and even the ECMWF today, which are initially warm into early April, into the upcoming week. But beyond that, we see a stronger easterly or northeasterly flow, cold air moving in, overnight frosts and daytime temperatures struggling to get into the double digits. Still sunny, still quite beautiful, but much cooler. Other runs though, like the GFS, don't have that easterly wind and instead the high pressure is positioned that we put in a southerly wind so you see even warmer air and we do go into a bit of a mini early spring heat wave 23 24 degrees on the latest GFS today. Now I know that's not official heat wave territory by Met Office standards but for early part of April that definitely is a considerable warmth um, a good seven eight degrees above average if not more in some spots. So we've got strong confidence as we head into the longer range. It's going to be really quite pleasant. But just how warm that is the debate at the moment. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see the beautiful blue skies and wall-to-wall -wall sunshine that we've got at the moment. There's a few showers across the far east of Scotland. But for most, it is bone dry. It is very pleasant as this high pressure system fully pushes in. This is kind of the first day where we're all now under this high pressure system. And it's going to be like that for this all, for all of this upcoming week. This is going to be the high pressure response to the sudden stress for it warming we saw a number of weeks ago. And of course, when that did occur, I said there was a real possibility that we saw some extremes into early April, or late March. And what we're seeing is that kind of warmer extreme in terms of persistent, high pressure, warm conditions. But as I said, it could turn into the colder scenario if we do see those east to northeasterly winds pushing in. But if you are wondering why we're seeing this persistent high pressure, it all goes back to that sudden stratospheric warming that we saw a few weeks ago. As we said, high pressure is going to propagate through the atmosphere. And that's exactly what we're seeing now with high pressure really not moving for the next week or two. Now, if you do put on the temperatures, you can see this afternoon, recording this around 3 p.m., especially in the south and the east, very, very warm today. Temperatures into the high teens, actually a good few degrees higher than forecast. It just shows you the power of the sunshine this time of year. Further northward, slightly chillier, but generally speaking, it's a mild, warm, early spring day. Now, do head over to the UKV now. You can see as we head through this morning, there's a bit of cloud around, but slowly cleared through the afternoon. Look at that. Lots of sunshine for mainland England, Wales, Scotland. A bit more cloud in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, but generally speaking, still very pleasant. As we progress into Monday, a bit of cloud around in the morning and perhaps a little bit more lingering in the north and the west through the afternoon. But again, England and Wales, wall to wall sunshine, brilliant conditions to end March. Into the first day of April, look at that, beautiful conditions into the morning, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine once, get a few bits of high level cloud in the north, but generally speaking, again, a really stunning day. As we'll see from the temperatures in a the minute, though, they don't quite reflect that. They're more around the 15, 16 degree mark, which still is very good. It's just not kind of what you'd expect by just looking at this wall-to-wall -wall sunshine in the spring months. You'd expect it to be a couple of degrees higher. It's all because of this slight easterly flow. 
Same conditions into Wednesday again. Look at that wall to wall sunshine. Even more sunshine and blue skies there. Same into Thursday. A bit of cloud in the far southwest. Maybe a few heavy showers. Need to keep a close eye on that. It's a bit of a disturbance appearing there. And later on in the week, still really quite nice. Now, the difference you can see right at the end of the run is the wind direction does start to shift. So actually, by Thursday, Friday, the temperatures could be slightly higher, more towards the high teens. And that's because that easterly flow dissipates and more of a southeasterly or southerly does arrive. And we can see that on the mean sea level pressure. You can see at least early on this week, the high pressures to our east. So we've got this easterly flow. Again, it's not a easterly wind. It's not brisk or anything, just a slight easterly flow, allowing cooler air to push in. However, later on in the week, you see those ice bars do tighten and they do veer to more of a southeasterly there. You can see the ice bars are coming in more from the near continent instead of off the North Sea. It's a very subtle shift. Uh, and again, it doesn't have to be exactly at this pressure level. This is mean surface level pressure higher up in the atmosphere could be slightly different. And all of this together means that slightly warmer air pushes in. And that means that by the end of the week, it could be a few degrees warmer at the surface. Now you can see this afternoon, the forecasted temperatures around the 14 to 16 degree mark. It's about a degree or two warmer than that. So already exceeding expectations a little bit. Overnight temperatures are pretty cool, mid single digits. So chilly overnight, maybe even towards freezing in a few spots into Monday morning. But by the afternoon, once again, up towards 14 to 16 degrees. Into Tuesday, again, chilly into the morning. And for the first day of April into the afternoon, again, we're looking at mid teens, 14 to 16 degrees. Into Wednesday, again, a cold morning, but again, temperatures 14, 15, 16 degrees, very consistent, not too much deviation. So really going to be really quite pleasant and predictable out there this week. Into Thursday, another cool morning, but look what happens to the temperatures in the afternoon. Look at that, 18, 19, or even 20 degrees. You can see that subtle shift in wind direction to more of a southeasterly or southerly instead of a flat easterly means it's that much warmer and we'd expect that to continue into towards the end of the week but what happens at the end of the week where it stays with a southerly or southeasterly or whether it goes back to more of an east or northeasterly that will decide our fate into the first half of april where there will be a warm potentially bit of a spring heat wave like the gfs we're about to see shows or something cooler like the gm or the ECMWF, or something in between, because at the moment I think most ensemble members are somewhere in between. Warm, mid-teens, maybe high-teens, but not quite the low 20s like the GFS, but not quite the cold conditions with overnight frosts like the other operational runs. Now, if you head over to the latest GFS, you can see the high pressure is building in at the moment, very pleasant conditions. And again, you can see that easterly coming in from the near continent for the early part of the week, but it shifts more of a southeasterly, very small shift, and that makes all the difference towards the end of the week. That AC could return for a short period of time next weekend, but generally speaking, as we progress beyond that, further into April, we do start to see it shift to more of a southerly. And what that means is warmer air gets drawn our way. And if we do put on the upper air temperatures, you can see, look at that, the 10 degree ice firm pushing in and even really dominating the 10 degree ice firm there for a period of time into the following weeks, out towards the day 7 to day 10 time frame. So getting into the longer term here, but we've got very strong confidence in this high pressure. It's just the exact wind direction and air masses. You can see very cold air is not too far away across Eastern Europe and Scandinavia. Again, if the orientation was slightly different, we would tap into that and that could turn us colder. But as I said, the GFS is on the warm scenario and it keeps us really beautiful and pleasant all the way towards the end of the run before eventually some slightly cooler air breaks through, which is inevitable. It's never going to last forever. But you can see the upper air temperatures. Look at this, 10 to 12 degrees above average. And if we do zoom in to the surface, you'll be able to see that we are looking really quite pleasant at the surface, widely into the low 20s and some of the other days getting up. I think I ran through this earlier. We got to about 23 degrees, I think was the peak that we got to on the days around this spike in heat. So really quite pleasant. And I do think we'll just have to wait and see that. Oh, there we go, 23 degrees there in London on the 11th of April. So really quite pleasant conditions, beautiful early spring-like conditions. But as I said, most runs are a little bit cooler and some are substantially cooler. And you see that now from the other operational runs. And now if you look at the latest GM, again, very similar. Not too much deviation at all. That easterly wind pushing in, maybe go southeast for a time, but look where the centre of the high is. It's towards Iceland. 
which means we see more northeasterlies or easterlies into the longer range. And although high pressure is still firmly in charge and eventually some warmer air heads our way, we do see that cold air come tantalizingly close. And although at the 850 HPA level, we're not seeing that very cold air pushing in, we do see cooler air throughout the atmosphere push our way. And if we go here to Monday the 7th of April when the GFS was starting to push us into the low 20s, look at this, we're freezing overnight and by midday, just about getting into the double digits. So although synoptically, the high pressure is completely in control because that wind's coming in more from an easterly direction or at least a couple of days prior much stronger northeasterly instead of a southerly high pressure is very similar position just slight alterations in orientation and wind direction it means instead of being into a mini spring heat wave with 22 23 degrees we're instead seeing 9 10 degrees and overnight frosts so this is why there is a lot of uh, uncertainty in the longer range but you can see regardless we are under higher pressure so either way it could be warm it could be cool it could be somewhere in between but the most important thing in my opinion is that high pressure is involved it's going to be dry it most likely will be sunny hopefully it will be warm but we'll have to wait and see ECMWF is actually very similar High pressure pushing in that easterly flow coming in off the North Sea. It does turn warmer later next week with a bit of a southerly uh, or southeasterly push. But eventually that easterly never goes away. And yes, we do eventually go a bit warmer there. But right at the end of the run, we do actually start to see a northerly or northeasterly trying to push in. And you'll be able to see here that the upper air temperatures are actually starting to get very cold. Look at that, the minus 10 isotherm's not too far away. And even earlier on in the run, you can see those greens trying to nudge in. That's that cooler air at the surface trying to push our way. And if we do look at those surface temperatures, very similar to the GM, we'll be able to see that it is going to be pretty chilly as well. These are the midday temperatures, if we do get them to load. Easy, not quite as cool as the GM, but still much lower than the GFS. 12, 13, 14 degrees overnight frost. So not quite as cold as the GM, but nonetheless not as exciting, not as beautiful as the GFS uh, either. So GFS, definitely the warmest. ECMWF is kind of in the middle. A few days of the high teens, more days in the mid to low teens, or the GM, which is just about nudging into the double digits. So you can see the three different scenarios all look very similar on the synoptic charts, but you have to have a look and sort of delve into the details a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And you'll be able to see the slight alterations in those wind directions making all the difference. Now, do have a look finally at the ensembles. You can see all in agreement over the next week that we're going to be a few degrees above average and that's why surface temperatures are only going to be a few degrees above average it's not that much in the way of warmer air and it's coming in off the north sea later on in the week though could turn a bit warmer and then see the gfs operation run going very warm 10 to 12 degrees above average that mini heat wave now there are some other runs getting near it and around it maybe not quite as many getting to the same level but quite a few getting in and around it and you can see quite a few more around average. And there's a few much cooler and a bit more unsettled. So GFS definitely on the warmer end. But definitely the operational run was on the right extreme of those warmer ensemble members. The two meter temperatures, you can see generally mid-teens. Maybe more towards the high teens, longer range. But you can see still plenty that keep it a bit cooler. So there is a lot of uh, agreement that at least out towards the 9th, 10th, the next kind of 10 days we're dry pleasant hopefully warm and sunny but there is that disagreement progressively about ex exactly what those temperatures will be and the spanner in the works is the fact that the ecmwf there's a lot more confidence when we get this to load there is a lot more confidence in those cooler scenarios you can see very similar the next week maybe seven eight days and then that big drop off down towards the minus five line or cooler still quite a few that are in around average to the ECMWF run there's kind of middle of the pack with those slightly warmer runs as we saw that they were around the 14 to 17 degree range so pleasant similar to what we've got today but not quite as warm as the GFS you can see though those considerably cooler runs which do pull in that colder pool from Scandinavia much much colder so although it looks very pleasant looks like high pressure high confidence in that dominating the exact temperatures still up for debate, especially as we progress into April. 
And you can see there is a lot of disagreement still within the ensemble members. And if we do see one of these cooler scenarios, it might be sunny, but it will feel like we're back in January. And finally, if we put on those two meter temperatures, you can see very pleasant over the next week, mid teens, 15 to 17 degrees, probably. And then a little bit of uncertainty in the longer range. Some runs only eight or nine, other runs up towards 20. So still a lot to be debated. So as we progress into April, the big, big thing that, you know, we, we're kind of skirting around a little bit is the fact that this high pressure is involved. So it's going to be sunny. It's going to be dry. I think that is the most important thing. But it's the temperatures that we're just going to have to continue to keep a very close eye on. It all depends on very subtle shifts in the higher pressure, uh, you know, shifts that we're not going to be able to forecast right now. You know, we're going to have to wait a few days until the uh, sort of uh, all, all of the sort of creases within the models get ironed out. We'll have to wait and see. But definitely, if a run like the GFS came off, then yes, we'd be looking at some proper summer like conditions. And fingers crossed, as I, to be honest, I wouldn't mind that indeed. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.